Hello. Oh, I don't can hear me, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but if you still can't, let me know, I'll shout even louder. Um, so, uh, let's start with who I am. Uh, my name is uh, Shanali, as you can see in the schedule. It's correctly written. Uh, where I live in Germany, they keep uh, inverting my name on their own, because Ali can't be a last name, so they, yeah. Uh, a lot of fun there. Um, and I work for Red Hat uh, since uh, January, but I worked for Red Hat for five years before, and then I left and I regretted leaving, leaving and then I finally found a way to get back. <laughs> uh, so most of my background is in FOSS uh, for the last I don't know, 19 years now, maybe. Uh, I've been working with different kinds of FOSS software, and I'm all about free software and open source. Um, besides that, I'm into flying, and uh, I, uh, I have a cat, and I love cats. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'll, I'll tell you a story, um, and it's uh, not that impressive, but since you're here, you might as well listen. <laughs> um, I'll try to be funny. Uh, so uh, it, uh, it starts in uh, 2007, um, when uh, in Finland some people were bored, and they were having beers, as they do and a sound or something, and uh, the one of them was this guy, and the other one was this guy. You might have noticed some common thing in these two pictures. They're both into flying, as am I. <laughs> so um, something to do with flying and so connection with Finland and um, whatever, uh, people start thinking about, what about the, if we can locate people uh, from an, an open source uh, context? Uh, proprietary world has already been doing that, so the, the, um, I think that this was about the time when uh, pro uh, the proprietary uh, phones and stuff, they started really doing very well for, uh, in terms of locating where people are, um, and uh, it's, this is something missing in open source world. Um, so they thought of um, uh, something called, uh, uh, like, uh, they decided that we should have like a Dbus service. Dbus was also new at that time, but every, all new services on the desktop stuff at least were Dbus based. Um, so they thought they should have a lower geolocation service. Uh, geolocation means to locate where you are, if you didn't know already. Right. Um, and um, they, so they came up with the idea, um, uh, and there were some Garmin people involved as well, and they wanted to use it in their product. Um, and these two guys I showed you, they were both they were both involved. In, they were involved in MIMO and MIGO, if you know about that, in, in Nokia. Um, so GeoClue was born. Uh, that was the name given to the project. Uh, location Diva service and um, those two guys they were too busy the one of them is not a coder and the other one who is a coder he does a lot of things so they needed uh, um, you know someone to to do the actual work and this guy showed up uh, also from Finland and he um, did the, uh, he was a summer of code student so he did implementation of GeoClue um, sorry in um, um, in, in in a GSOC uh, project, um, and he did like a lot of work in a very small amount of time. Uh, pretty good for our first uh, ever implementation, geolocation implementation, uh, a Diva service uh, of its kind. Um, and um, the the concept was uh, based on external providers. Uh, in those days, like the, a lot of these Diva services, they were uh, designed to be very modular, and so they went with the same approach. Um, so. Uh, the main service did not implement any sources. It, they didn't. It had, had no solution for how to actually locate you, um, and the actual location was provided by external sources, external providers, and there were some implemented and, and as part of the service, but mostly uh, uh, by other people um, as part of their platform mainly. Um, it uh, mainly uh, in the open source world, uh, with, without any, uh, if you get a product, then the uh, people who have a GeoClue based product, they would uh, integrate their proprietary services with it and you have much better geolocation. But in the open source, in the, uh, in the upstream world, uh, you had only two main sources. One was the GYP, which is the simplest um, uh, source of how to uh, find people. And it, uh, it kind of always works in a sense that everyone who is connected to internet has an IP, uh, so there's at least a way to, to find your location. That, that IP might not be, uh, you know, you might not be able to locate where that IP is, but at least you have an IP, something to go on uh, with. Um, and another thing was Wi Fi based geolocation, but uh, not really, it wasn't a Good solution, but what they had was like in, in some file you yourself can add 
the Wi-Fi networks um, and the location where it is. So then you end up with a configuration database where you have all these uh, Wi-Fi's where they are. But that was like a personal thing and uh, only advanced users could handle that. So it wasn't really a Wi-Fi location source, but kind of. Um, they, they have also kind of co-created another project called Gypsy for uh, being able to utilize uh, standalone GPS devices, um, the one you connect to Bluetooth and, and, and uh, USB. Um, uh, the thing is, like, there was already something called GPSD, which has existed for much longer. But um, I'll not say anything about the maintainer being horrible, uh, but um, he, he's a horrible person. <laughs> but um, um, uh, you can find out who it is, and you will probably agree with me. Um, but it was also because uh, the, the GPSD had a very conservative architecture. It comes from the Unix, old Unix days. Um, where uh, like you don't do any kind of memory allocations, and so it put a lot of restrictions on what they use, and also they didn't want to use Dbus because that was too new and cool for them. So um, they came up with this Gypsy project for for, uh, for handling GPS devices, uh, and it was uh, put separate from G uh, GeoClue because uh, these standalone GPS devices typically require some configuration, and that configuration couldn't be part of GeoClue. It didn't work out of the box. Um, and um, also it had an archaic IPC, as I said, they didn't want, didn't want to do DBus, so they did uh, some own IPC mechanism. Strange. Anyway, um, so GeoClue got on a bit, and uh, there was a dream, the people were excited about it. And um, uh, there were uh, Garmin and MIMO devices already uh, then using it, so it was already also in, in products. Um, but then, over time, the dreams got forgotten, and uh, whoever had the old GeoClue, they just kept on using it, however it was, whether it was broken or not, they just kept on going with it. And the people who were behind uh, the GeoClue building and, uh, and envisioning it, they, um, they had other things to do, so they just forgot about it. Um, until uh, 2013, uh, when I got bored with I uh, um, talked to this guy, he's involved, uh, he works for Red Hat and uh, at, at that time he was in the same group as me in the desktop team of uh, Red Hat and he's involved in a lot of different open source projects, he does a lot. Um, I don't know how he lives because he does too much work. Um, so yeah, I talked to him and he said, yeah, I, uh, I have this GeoClue, new uh, idea for GeoClue, so you can do the implementation, I have the design already uh, and I agreed to that and GeoClue 2 was born. Um, it's a complete rewrite of, of GeoClue. I didn't even want to look at the old code because that was really showing its age. Each time I looked at it, I just didn't understand what was going on. It was using very old libraries that were not maintained anymore and stuff. So I thought it, it just best if I start from scratch um, using modern tech and uh, um, libraries and stuff. Um, it was uh, designed to be simple. Uh, architecture, so for example, uh, we didn't have external sources, but internal sources only, so everything lives in the same repository. If you want to add some source, come and talk to us, uh, submit patches, we, we are more than happy to add more and more sources to the upstream GeoClue. And it also grows the project uh, that way, because um, with the previous approach, people were having their own proprietary solutions, and they didn't bother to contribute upstream because they had no reason to, but this gave them more, um, afforded them more to um, also, the, there's this thing called geocoding. It's a process of uh, translating a string to a, um, to a location or a set of locations. And reverse geocoding is the opposite. Like you, you get a location and you, can, you need to find out where that location is, what, uh, what's the name or something. Um, and that was part of previous GeoClue, but uh, this was separated out into another library. I helped create this library, actually. Um, and it uses Nominatham, the um, OpenStreetMaps database for, uh, for doing its work, but it was then put separately. Um, and uh, we wanted to have already cons like, um, uh, ac uh, address privacy concerns, because uh, your location is one of the most sensitive data you have on your devices. Uh, you don't want it to be given to any app you, you don't trust. Um, so it would be nice to, to have that uh, control. And um, so we came up with the idea of uh, app authorization agent. Actually, it was 
he passed yet, but I can still take some credit. Um, and uh, we, uh, at least I implemented it for GNOME, uh, which I cared about at that time only, and um, uh, other people, like elementary people, they did it for their operating system. So it's, a, it's an agent that, uh, that is part of your desktop, and it is responsible for authorizing different apps. Like when GeoClue gets a request from an app, like I want your the location, it tells which, uh, what kind of location, city level or street level or whichever precision, and uh, it uh, asks the agent, uh, whatever agent is installed, uh, I this user uh, for this user uh, and for this app, can I access location for this accuracy? And the agent can say yes, yes or no. Um, so um, yeah, so there was some privacy control finally, um, and there was UI for controlling it. And uh, of course, you can't have a geolocation service without any sources. How would you find where, where you are? There's different ways. Um, first, the easy ones to go with GeoIP. There's a, uh, like a, a database um, uh, called, uh, it's called from a company called MaxMind. And that's the most used uh, uh, GeoIP database out there. There's a commercial version and there's non-commercial version. There's not a lot of difference between them. There's some. Uh, the commercial is a bit more up to date and accurate, but it's still GIP in general is not very accurate. You get at best city level uh, location. If you are very lucky, maybe district level. Um, and um, uh, GPS enabled modems. So there's a modem. There's two different kinds of modem services. The one I went for is modem manager, um, and um, it, it's simple. Like you get. Um, uh, you just access the GPS from there. You don't have to configure the GPS. As I was saying, in the standalone case, um, you have to configure it. But in these cases, you don't. You just access the, the, mo um, the GPS. But the problem is that these modems, how many devices have it? Like um, desktop machines don't have it, at least. Um, laptops, some laptops started having these, but they were disabled or removed. Um, so it, it wasn't that reliable. Um, uh, and then we have the challenging ones. Uh, with the first one, and it's also the most effective ones, uh, nearly all devices except for desktops have Wi-Fi, uh, so why not make use of that? Um, and as I mentioned, the modem, so you modem also, of course, it is for cellular base, so you can connect to cellular. Um, the cellular um, gives you an accuracy of up till some kilometers, a kilometer at best, uh, but um, 10 or something? <laughs> okay. Uh, but Wi Fi gives you street level geolocation, uh, location, and that's really, really good. And it doesn't require any special hardware. Wi Fi is almost everywhere. Um, so we, we went for Yahoo uh, separate, uh, database first for, for geo, Wi Fi geolocation. Because Wi Fi, uh, the way it works is that you ask, like, I, I see these networks, where am I, like, from a server? And where does the server come from? You have to have some database somewhere. And Yahoo had one almost open, but then it wasn't, I think it was closed. Um, so we were out of ideas, but then Mozilla came and we had like a, uh, a good solution because they utilized their, their user base uh, all across the world who were really eager to provide the data of uh, different Wi-Fi's all around the world. So they have a really huge number, uh, number amount of data now, and you get a really good location from it, and that was really good. Uh, for desktop machines, we had one more solution uh, that the best we could come up with. We have an app for Android um, that you can um, that just transfer the uh, GPS data, which is called NNEA format, um, you know, over TCP, and it uses Avahi to do the um, announcement that I'm here on the network, on the same network as the desktop or whatever machine, and the machine running GeoClue, whether it's laptop or desktop, picks it up, and then it gets a very accurate uh, GPS-based location from your from your phone um, if they are on the same network. Um, standalone GPS devices, uh, we don't have a good solution. G Gypsy was almost gone. It's uh, maintained for many years. Um, and it's the same thing was with the GeoClues uh, uh, source code that you just didn't want to touch it anymore. It's so old and no, nobody, the maintainers are gone, so they don't they can't answer your questions. So we came up with a new uh, software called GPS Share, which I wrote in, in Rust. Um, I'm going to talk more about that, but apparently you have five minutes left. Um, but uh, but um, Rust is a language that is very reliable. It's designed to be very reliable and very um, uh, safe language, and also very efficient. 
Um, so I, I wrote this in, in, in that one, which it, it just does uh, manage your mod modem, uh, sorry, GPS, standalone GPS device. Um, okay, and we, from beginning, we had GNOME integration because I was working with GNOME. Um, we have, I wrote, uh, co-wrote a uh, software called Maps for GNOME and that uses geolocation. Uh, I also have implemented automatic time zone update in GNOME which is based on this. And uh, Clocks and Weather uses it, uh, WebKit GTK uses it. And more, uh, but more recently we, uh, we moved from Bugzilla to, to GitLab. Um, that was a huge win because uh, we, I got a lot more contributors now. Um, contributing random patches. It's, it became so easy to contribute random patches. Uh, it's, it's so good. Uh, with Bugzilla, that wasn't the case. Um, but now there's also Flatpak. So we are changing how... Um, I won't go into detail about what Flatpak is. I don't have time. Uh, but you can search it. But it is. It's a, it's a bun app, app bundling and sandboxing solution. Um, so um, we, we drop app authorization for system apps because um, we cannot identify system apps. Uh, by system apps, I mean uh, apps running natively on your machine without a sandbox. Um, and uh, there's j just no way on Linux. So we were just kind of pretending that we are giving you privacy, um, uh, but we were, in reality, we weren't doing real uh, security and privacy because any app can uh, pretend to be an agent or anything, and we just don't have no way. So the only way to do um, uh, achieve uh, uh, true privacy is through sand, uh, sandboxing. Um, so we, uh, we gave up on app authorization for system apps. It's only for sandbox applications now. Um, there's some challenges ahead. Um, Mozilla Location Service, as you know, Mozilla is not, no longer into mobile uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so they have no reason to keep developing the location service or maintain it. Uh, they, they're keeping the light on. They, they're running the service, the instance, so we can still use it. Um, but uh, all the bugs, they won't be ever fixed because there is no developer working on it. So that's a really huge risk for open source geolocation right now. Um, and uh, I would really love some other organization to take over this, this role. And uh, if, they, if they are using especially uh, geolocation, I think one of them would be, could be GNOME Foundation. But that's why I wanted Neil to be in my talk, but he's not listening to me right now. And, um, uh, yeah, it would be really cool if a uh, if foundation or some other, any open source organization can help us out with this uh, really uh, big problem. Um, because if there's no Wi-Fi geolocation, it just wouldn't work. It, it, that's the best uh, thing we have uh, for geolocation right now in open source. Um, we want more platforms. Uh, Yola is still using the old GeoClue and maintain. There's a lot of other platforms I've heard of that they're still using old ones. Would be cool if they, you know, uh, port to the new one and report any issues if they have, and I'll try my best to solve them. Um, more contributors are needed. Uh, please, I'm just one guy, and I'm doing it on my spare time, which I don't have a lot of. Um, also, I intend to rewrite the service code in Rust. Uh, over the years, um, it's written in C. I didn't mention GeoClue. Uh, too as well, and um, I have received many, many uh, crash reports. Um, I'm not a bad C programmer, and um, uh, still, I, and I, and I keep learning uh, every day um, uh, to do C better, more safer. But still, I'm a human being, and I will make mistakes. And anyone who will work on this will. So, um, I I want to rewrite the service part of the code. That's the core um, in Rust. And uh, fortunately, there is a lot of people in Outreachy and uh, Google Summer of Code that are interested to work on that. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that if by the end of the summer, we will have the service code rewritten in, in Rust. Um, but if you want to work on that, uh, please, uh, please come and talk to me. Um, but that's it. <laughs> if any questions, then I don't know. If you want to go for tea, it's already time, but uh, you can ask questions too. Any hands? One at the far back. <laughs> of course it has to be at the back. I was wondering if uh, OpenStreetMap could provide the data that you need for uh, the location. Or if you know anything about it or uh, explore the option. Um, uh, I, I guess it, it, it's up to them. 
they, they need to you know, come forward. I can ask them, of course, but uh, I don't know. They, they already have their hands full with what they're doing. So I, it seems a bit unlikely, but you never know. So if you, if you want to ask for me, and I might forget, I'm a very forget, forgetful person, so that would be awesome. And let me know if they say yes, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm curious uh, how feasible it would be to have an offline database of these Wi-Fi access points. I mean, I don't know the scale of it, but things are pretty bloated now anyway, and we have huge storage on our mobile phones, etc. So maybe we don't even need an online service for those. Uh, yeah, um, you're talking more about caching, and that would be really cool to, to do in GeoClue. And I, want, I would like to do that. Um, it just, it's a, just about someone doing it. Um, I would be very much willing to do, uh, to do that. And, it, and you're right, it would be really, really good to have that. I don't dare to run down the stairs. <laughs> so how do you do time zone lookup from geoposition? Um, you find out where you are, and then you have, uh, there's a database of, um, like, uh, Coordinates like a rectangle right. or something. Oh, of a street map, or uh, where do you get that database? I think it's their own custom database that they're okay. using in the uh, GNOME yep. setting team. Any more questions? Otherwise, I propose we give a big hand. To you.